How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justify DDC and I wanted to bring you guys a video on budget knives, budget folders in particular, and what makes a budget folder worth it, what makes one good, um, and just kind of the trend that we're seeing with budget folders right now. So um, in, when we talk about the quality of budget folders and what makes you want to go out and get one versus a more expensive knife versus just going to the uh, local hardware store and picking up a razor blade kind of thing. Um, there's kind of three factors that I like to look at, and one of those is price to quality ratio. So um, the quality that you're getting versus how little you're paying for it. Um, features that are often on more expensive knives is the second one, and availability and access to these knives and these designs. So what I mean when I go over those three is price to quality ratio. Um, something like, I'm just going to use this Kaiser original as an example. The quality on this compared to it, all of these really on the table feel like much more expensive knives than they are. Um, and that really comes from the second two factors. But uh, all of these knives uh, all across the board just feel like very high quality pieces for not that much money. Um, all of these are under $100, most of them are under $50, some of them getting below $20. So all of these are very accessible, which is the third point, is these are all easy to get, they're easy to come by, um, and they get to you very quickly. Uh, almost, I think almost all of these you can get on Amazon, I'm pretty sure actually all of these you can get on Amazon, most of them one or two day shipping. Um, you can get them directly from the manufacturer's websites, depending on if you have some people that you want to have discount codes, it might be a little cheaper to do it that way. But I'm just going to kind of go through each of these quickly. There's not going to be a full review on each of these. Um, some of them I have reviews coming. This one I have a review on. This one I have a review on already. Uh, if you look back at my channel. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go over these quick and kind of just with each of them go over those three points that make them... Uh, a good budget knife, and then talk about maybe some of the issues with that as well. So starting off, we're gonna go left to right because these are in order of least expensive to most expensive. Um, starting off here is the Gonza Firebird. I feel like this is the 712, I think is the no model number. It doesn't say it on here, but um, like I said in the uh, um, first overview I did of this in my new knives and gear section, um, this feels like one of those older H&K knives that Benchmade made and then Hogue made and then got discontinued. Um, so term, talking about price to quality ratio, um, this feels amazing. There, I've had Benchmades that don't feel as well put together as this knife does. Um, and the price on this is insane, it's stupid low. Uh, right now, it's listed for like $18 on Amazon, and at least on mine, uh, there's a 25% uh, coupon code that you can add when you add it to cart. So you can get this knife for like $15 right now. Uh, it's 440C, G10, uh, Axis style lock, uh, really nice drop point blade with a swedge. You have that thumb ramp with some nice jimping on it. Um, I think it's a, just a nice aesthetically pleasing uh, knife. It's ground a little bit thicker than some, so this is kind of a harder use, more of a working knife. Uh, it works with pretty much every grip that you want to use in, including edge and reverse grip, which you guys know if you watch this channel that I'm a big fan of. Um, but yeah, it feels good in pretty much all your grips. It's a genuinely pretty neutral handle. You have a little bit of a uh, finger groove here, but all in all, it's a pretty uh, straightforward design. Um, Features that are often on expensive knives. The second point, uh, the access lock. Now this is becoming more common on budget knives, especially now that Benchmade's um, patent ran out on even more uh, high-end production knives are, are using this more. But really where I think this lock shines is in the budget realm because honestly, uh, some of these from like the, uh, the Harns, the Gonzo, I've had some other ones that are um, made by Kaiser, it's a Vivi and um, all those other kind of budget brands, they're all doing great things with this Axis style lock. So for someone that wants to try out a very ambidextrous locking system, but doesn't want to pay the um, sometimes overpriced nature of Benchmade knives, um, or even something a little bit more uh, affordable, or maybe I'd say a better bang for your buck like the uh, Hogue Deca, 
even though those are all over $100. Benchmades are usually well over $200. Um, here you can try out an access lock that I think works very well for under $20. Even without that coupon code, you can get this for $18. Um, and then available availability and access, like I said, you can get this on Amazon. It's one day shipping right now, at least to where I am. So um, yeah, this hits all three of my marks for price to quality ratio, uh, features that are often on more expensive knives, and availability and access. That's the Gonzo Firebird. And again, I'll leave links to uh, the uh, Amazon pages down below in the description so you can pick these up. Uh, obviously, you can get these most of these on any kind of knife retailer websites like uh, Knife Center, Blade HQ, or the manufacturer's websites as well. But Amazon's usually the cheapest place to get it. Uh, moving on is the Petrified Fish Knives. Um, I don't think this one has a name, and I honestly don't remember. I think this is the model number, the PF719. Um, this is actually their least expensive knife. It comes in at right around $29. Uh, now, full disclosure, I had reached out to Petrified Fish, uh, and they gave me a 20% discount code that I bought this with. So I got this for, uh, I think, like $21, $22, something like that. Uh, but these come in under $30 with shipping. So, um, and this this is an amazing knife. I just got this yesterday. My wife bought this for me, actually. Um, and uh, you got wooden handles that actually feel really nice. Uh, it's not coming across great in this light. But in real life, especially out in sunlight, these wood handles actually look really, really nice. Uh, 12, 12C27 steel, uh, which is a decent budget steel. It's ground super, super, super thin. And it came insanely sharp. Uh, I did some light cutting with it last night. Um, the other thing is the action is amazing. It runs on bearings and it's insanely drop shut smooth. Um, you, especially for as light and thin of a blade as this is. Um, I kind of, re I'm really into knives right now that have that like straight razor almost kind of profile. Uh, the only downside of this is it doesn't have a pocket clip, hence why I have a lanyard on it. I've actually been throwing this in that Citizen E pouch that I that I carry, it fits in there. So um, yeah, this is a really cool one. So price to quality ratio, this feels like a very expensive knife. It's lightweight, the action is insane, it's ground nice and thin, it has a decent steel, um, it feels good in hand, again, neutral handle. So um, price to quality ratio is off the charts with this one, uh, coming in right under $30. Uh, features that are often on more expensive knives, um, I mean, you can get some, I, I don't even know what this wood is, um, but I've seen some cheap wooden handles that really don't look that nice. Uh, and these, I think, feel very, very nice. But for me, the feature that is often on more expensive knives for me on this one is the action. Um, again, I'm not the biggest fan of bearing actions, especially on uh, harder use knives or fighting knives, anything like that. Uh, but for just a little lightweight EDC knife like this, bearings are just a nice touch. Um, and the action on this, I've had knives that are 10 times the price of this, and uh, just, they perform much, much, uh, rephrase that, they, they don't perform nearly as well as this does in terms of the action department. So does action matter all that much? No, it really doesn't, um, but it's a nice feature, especially for this uh, price point. Uh, and then availability and access again. This is, I got it from the manufacturer's website, but it is on Amazon for like $29 uh, free shipping. So this hits all three as well. Moving on to this is the Harns Beak. You guys probably saw this if you watched my new knives and gear video. Um, this is coming in and around, let me look at my notes here, right around $33. Um, again, prices on Amazon, especially on knives like this, really fluctuate. Um, so they will go up and down if you watch enough, if you put a watch on any of these, you can sometimes get them for a little cheaper than you might see them at the first time they're listed. Uh, but yeah, $33 is what I got this for. It's what it's still listed on Amazon at the time of me filming this. Um, this is a really interesting design as well. Uh, and just jumping right into the second point, actually, the features that are often on more expensive knives. One, it has the access lock, which is really smooth. Like, I don't know how to show that on camera. Uh, kind, of, kind of going down like that, but really smooth access lock, um, nice action, uh, well built. There's not a lot of wiggle or anything like that in the action. Um, 
Yeah, and then also just the interesting design, like this kind of S-curve blade. Really the only other knives that I know of that have that kind of reverse S-curve kind of blade are Spyderco Matriarch and Civilian, that whole line, Spyderco Dodo, and the Cold Steel Black Talon. Um, so if you're looking for something like that and you want to spend significantly less money than those go for, uh, this is under $50, under $30, uh, under $40 actually. So $33, it goes up and down. I've seen these get a little bit lower. So if you keep an eye out, uh, but this is just a really excellent knife. So price to quality ratio, again, the access lock, this feels better than some Benchmade access locks I've had, um, actually comparing this to, and I, I love this knife. Uh, the Benchmade, I don't even remember what this is called, to be honest with you. Um, I'm kind of looking at this off camera. I don't remember what it is. Well, you, you guys probably know what this is. But again, for me to get this access lock tight enough so that there's no play, like it doesn't drop anymore. I have to flick it closed, which isn't a big deal because I just love the design of this knife. But then compare that to the Harns here. This is a $33 knife that you can get shipped to your house in like one or two days. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and again, that covers the availability and access point. That's again, third knife in a row, hitting all three points. Um, and then again, this is in 14C28N, which is probably my favorite budget steel. Uh, again, and you're getting that under the $50 mark. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you don't usually see 14C28 or like 154CM or anything like that under $50. So. To get this at this price point is pretty awesome. Moving on, this is, and this is a company that I think is often overlooked by like the YouTube community that does a lot of videos on budget folders. This is a cold steel, this is the cold steel Crawford one. And this is built so well. Um, any of you guys that have like the more expensive cold steels, you know that they're capable of good build quality. And another thing that I think probably makes this stand out from some of the um, other budget knives in this kind of price range is this is made in Taiwan instead of China. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not gonna get into the politics of where these are made and whether you should be buying from your home country or whether you should be buying from China at all. I don't care. Um, I genuinely don't care. So um, feel free to be upset about that in the comments, but I'm not gonna talk about that. We're just gonna talk about the quality of the knives themselves and the companies. Um, so yeah, this is a cold steel. This is one of their overseas production knives, uh, but this is just such a good knife for the price. This comes in at 30 to $35. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes again. Um, depending on where you get this, depending on when Amazon has it listed for, uh, anywhere between 30 and $35. You have a FRN handle with like a rubberized inlay on both sides. Uh, I wish the clip was reversible, but it's not. Uh, it's a liner lock and it also has the secondary lock that keeps you from deactivating the liner lock. Um, I don't think I would really use that much, but it's nice that it's there. Uh, you can't really actuate it by accident. So, um, And then the other cool thing about this is as good as the flipping action is on this, it's on washers. Uh, it has an insanely nice action and it feels like glassy smooth. Um, and you can kind of thumb roll it open like that as well. But this is on phosphor bronze washers instead of bearings. And this just goes to prove that this is gonna be me going on a little bit of a tangent. Um, you can have your drop shutty Instagram action on washers. Uh, I wish more companies would do this. And Cold Steel I think did an excellent job here. Uh, I know Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese factories especially, and uh, Japanese factories as well, for that matter, are known for doing really nice jobs with their actions on washers. So um, like any of the Spyderco, Taiwan made knives or anything like that. Um, yeah, I just love seeing washers in a pivot. That's kind of my favorite. So, uh, but yeah, this is kind of also different than some of the other budget knives that are out there in this realm right now. Uh, a little more of a tactical looking uh, knife, but again, even though it has all of these finger grooves here in the handle, uh, you can use it in any of your standard grips. It's neutral enough, and the handle is very comfortable. Uh, I'm a sucker for that clip point blade. Uh, this is in uh, 4116 stainless, from which one I understand is pretty similar to like 440C. Um, so nothing insane, uh, but it, you have a decently thick stock. Um, so this is again, a little harder of a use knife, not ground quite as thin 
but I don't think if you guys are familiar with cold steel, you didn't really think they were going for um, a thin, lightweight knife. Uh, but this actually isn't super heavy. I think compared to, like, I think actually this Gonzo is a little bit heavier than this. But let's go on to the three uh, points here now that I'm done rambling. Uh, price to quality ratio, I think, is off the charts, especially for a washing washer action that's this good. Uh, this hits a lot of... Um, hits a lot of uh, key features for me for that. So price to quality ratio, I think is definitely there. Uh, features that are often on more expensive knives. Uh, one, the super strength of <laughs> pretty much any lock that Cold Steel designs. So that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I know they also have some more budget triad locks as well, but then also this uh, thumb ramp here, you can um, wave that. Uh, I can't really show it on camera, but uh, I mean, you can roll it with your thumb, but this will wave out of your pocket as well. So um, along with, and I have another example here, uh, those Kershaw Emersons. Uh, I didn't have an actual uh, Kershaw Emerson knife. This is just a trainer that I use as a, uh, a substitute for um, training with a live blade. So. Uh, I only have one of the Kershaw Emerson trainers right now, but these actually as well are around the $50 mark and are an excellent uh, value. But getting an Emerson Wave for um, not the price of an Emerson or even any of the Emerson collaborations with like Fox or Spyderco, uh, getting something like that uh, that will wave out of your pocket for under $50 is pretty awesome. Again, these come in at like around $30 to $35. So uh features that are often the more expensive knives those locks the wave um and then availability and access again on amazon free shipping these are also available on most of your standard uh, knife distributors as well moving on this is one i've actually done a full review on uh this is the kubi momentum uh kubi has really impressed me uh, i used to not pay a whole lot of attention to them i thought they were kind of just cheap uh low quality knives but this one proved me wrong and the other ones that i've handled as well have proved me wrong as well uh this is one of the most insane actions i've ever felt period not even on a budget knife just period uh and again action isn't everything but this has an insanely good action um it's very fidget friendly if that's what you like to do with your knives uh, but this is also a, a workhorse of a knife. It's in D2, which is the only downside for me. You guys know I'm not a big fan of D2. Uh, but they do make a version of this in OS 10 as well. Uh, it's a little more expensive. But, um, yeah, you have multiple deployment methods. The action's insane. Um, and, again, the neutral handle works really well for a variety of grips, all the grips you could ever want to do. Um, so price-to-quality ratio. Again, I've had knives way more expensive than this, which, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Uh, this runs anywhere from 50 to $70. The D2 versions come usually either right under 50 or right at 50. Um, and then the versions in OS 10, at least right now, are a little harder to get, um, but you can get them on Amazon, not with prime shipping, or you can get them off of Kubi's website for around $70. Um, but honestly, I think that $70 is still worth it. I talk about that in the review. So uh, I'll, I'll try to remember to link this actual review in the description as well. Uh, but price to quality ratio is just off the charts with this knife. This feels like an insanely uh, more expensive knife than it is. Um, this is probably my favorite budget folder for just like an EDC or even work knife. Um, features that are often on more expensive knives, obviously that action, uh, but then these multiple deployment methods as well. The front flipper, you can use it as a top flipper, uh, thumb studs, um, and then again, you get that nice deep carry clip. It's ground nice and thin. Um, so maybe not as many features that are more expensive knives, but I think the action, if you're after a stupid, uh, super stupid drop shut uh, bearing action, uh, look no further than the Kubi Momentum. I, I haven't heard of anyone that has one of these where the action isn't spectacular. So definitely try one of those out if that's what you're looking for. And then availability and access, you can get the D2 ones pretty much anywhere at any time. And then I think the OS 10 ones, as they get into more production, will become a little bit more available. All right, second to last here. This is the Concept Cryo. Um, again, the only other D2 knife on the table. Uh, I really wish this was in another steel other than D2 because I love this knife, uh, but I hate sharpening D2. So um, I actually had to sharpen this one up because I used it a bunch at work and I nicked the edge up. And uh, man, I hate sharpening D2. It's such a bitch. 
Um, but uh, this is a little bit better because it has a coating on the blade, so you're not dealing with any rust. Micarta handles, it's a canvas micarta, it's done very well. Um, this isn't as neutral the handle. You can do your reverse grips. Uh, actually, forward grip edge in works very well. So it's really just that reverse grip edge in that doesn't feel super great. Um, but all of your other grips are very comfortable. Uh, the handle is very well designed with this finger groove and the curvature in the handle there. Um, nice just drop, sh uh, drop point blade, multiple deployment methods. You got your flipper and you got your thumb hole that you can roll it open or you can reverse flick it. Um, the only issue I had with this knife, and I can probably solve it very easily by just putting some oil on it, is this little post back here. If I don't know if you can hear that, but it rattles. It drives me fucking nuts. Um, but I don't think it's really that much of an issue. Uh, it could just also be on mine. And again, I've had lanyard holes on Sebenzos, Chris Reeves Sebenzos that rattle like that. And yeah, I just fix it with a drop of oil. So I can't complain. Uh, this is a 55 to $65 knife, depending on what variant you get. You can get them in Micarta G10. For some reason on Amazon right now, the Micarta ones are actually cheaper than the G10 ones. Um, you can get them in like green and brown Micarta and a couple of other, uh, G10 colors as well. Um, but I got this for like $55 and I think this is well worth it. The only thing I'd like to see is maybe this with like 14C, 154, uh, even 12C, 27, just anything like that. A stainless steel would be cool. Um, but I you know it's, again, it is what it is. And I think for the design, uh, this is meant to be a little bit of a harder use knife. So D2 is a pretty tough steel. Um, so this might serve you well. So price to quality ratio, I think is there, especially for this micarta. This is really well done. Uh, canvas micarta. I'm a big fan of linen micarta. That's probably my favorite, uh, but this canvas is done very well. And you can see I was carrying it in the pocket, starting to wear in very nicely. Uh, clips done well. Um, yeah, everything's, uh, pretty cool with this knife. Uh, features that are often on more expensive knives. Um, I would say this one doesn't have as many of those. This might be the first one that doesn't hit all three marks. Um, but I think maybe the quality of the micarta, uh, would be one because oftentimes you see like just really kind of shitty micarta, especially on like, as much as I like Civivi and their build quality and how well their actions are tuned and everything, the micarta quality on Civivis is just garbage. Uh, it just looks like cheap Chinese micarta. Um, Kaiser uses American micarta, I believe. I don't know if Concept does, uh, but this looks like a high, more high quality, uh, like non-Chinese micarta. So that's nice. Um, and then availability and access. Again, this is on Amazon. This is on Blade HQ Knife Center, Smoky Mountain, and all of those good things, as well as the manufacturer website. You can get these pretty much anywhere, anytime. So yeah, I'd say just the micarta quality being actually not a piece of garbage is <laughs> that it uh, meets the uh, features that are often more expensive knives. And the action's pretty good as well. This one's on bearings, if I forgot to mention that. Uh, and then last but not least, the most expensive one, which is still coming in under $100. Uh, another knife I have a full review out on in, uh, it was actually my second video, I believe, is the Kaiser Original. Um, this is a really cool knife. Um, I would love to get the, in my mind, the sister version of this knife, which is the Drop Bear, which is basically this knife that looks slightly different and has like their version of the access lock. I played with one a while back and it was really cool, but I didn't own one. I'd love to get one to compare. Um, if anyone has one, let me know if they'd be willing to send that into the channel uh, just for me to review. Obviously, I'll get it back to you, but um, this is the uh, Kaiser Original. It is a button lock with, with aluminum scales and 154 cm uh, thumb stud action. Uh, the action on this is very, very smooth, especially now that I've broken it in. It was smooth out of the box, but it's even better now. Um, again, this had developed a little bit of play, and then I just put some blue Loctite on the pivot and it's fine now. Um, but this is probably the best example of price to quality ratio. To get a button lock knife with aluminum scales, a decent steel, um, good lock up, good action. You're usually looking at like those ProTech Malibus or the Mordex or anything like that that are well over $200. Uh, this comes anywhere from like 80, 
85 to 90 dollars depending on the scale options that you get i think they pretty much all come in 154 cm i could be mistaken um but they either come in aluminum or they're doing some copper scales now uh these are so successful it wouldn't surprise me at all if they did titanium or micarta or whatever in the future and then probably some upgraded steels because kaiser's known to do that of uh when they get a really popular knife, they'll do like 50 innovation, uh, 50 different versions of it. So <laughs> let's look at the bag later. Um, but yeah, this is excellent price to quality ratio. Uh, the clip is uh, perfect. It's one of those ones that has the inset uh, clip and screws, which I love, which that's moving on to features that are often on more expensive knives. Uh, any knife that has a clip that's inset with countersunk screws is just awesome. Uh, it's just, it's one of those things that they don't have to do, but they do anyways. It tells that they kind of care about the design. Uh, again, the, the excellent button lock action, um, and then just an aluminum scaled knife with 154 CM, um, I think is just an excellent bargain. And then availability and access. Uh, these actually are actually pretty easy to find now. Uh, when they first dropped, they sold out almost immediately, but now you can get the aluminum versions pretty readily available on Amazon and on a couple of the different Kaiser distributors' websites. Um, I haven't seen the copper ones on Amazon. I think actually one version of the copper one is still on Amazon. Uh, those might be a little harder to find. Again, they're a little bit more expensive, uh, but this aluminum scaled version, uh, the availability and access to is just fine. So. Those are just some uh, things I wanted to go over with you guys, just to give you a better idea of, uh, you know, when I used to, before I started the channel, uh, I wasn't as into collecting these kinds of budget knives, but I started watching some uh, other channels like Stats 23, Neves Knives, Bees Blades, those kinds of guys that they get a lot of these uh, budget knives in. And I was always skeptical of like, are they really as good as they're making them out to be? Like it can't, it seems insane that knives like, $50 and under are this good, uh, but they are. Um, they really, really, really are. So I would highly encourage you guys to check out any of these. Um, and again, any of these from, all, all of these brands are pretty reputable at this point. Uh, Petrified Fish is newer. Harns I haven't heard of as much, but um, all the Petrified Fish ones I've had have been great. Um, so I would highly encourage you to get any of these from any of these brands. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope this helped you, uh, helped you out, helped you make some decisions or just give you a, a new perspective. Uh, I know I usually focus a lot on fixed blades and stuff on this channel, but, um, I do enjoy a good folder. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or want to see any full reviews on any of these knives, again, a lot of these will be going through testing, uh, my testing process. These already had videos. I will link those in the description, but if you have any other questions, just let me know down in the comments. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.